God is good and with each day that passes brings us a day closer to the launch of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. This is the Nathan Napalm channel and if you are new here please consider subscribing especially if you're interested in Pantheon related content on our March to launch. Today guys I want to talk about why Brad McQuaid is in the perfect position right now Visionary Realms working on Pantheon Rise of the Fallen to do exactly what he wants to do and to make his vision come into full fruition without having to worry about kickback or pushes to launch or any of the things that has caused him problems in trying to do things in the past. So, to do that, we need to take a little trip back through time. When he was working on EverQuest, he came from a <laughs> working with a friend on a little game called War Wizard, and then he came into the fold and began, you know, working on EverQuest with John Smedley. John Smedley being the guy who actually invited him to be a part of this project. Now, at that time, they had no freaking idea what they were doing. Let's just be honest and blunt. I'm not going to go through the whole history. There's many of, gr of great documentaries that break that down. But basically, it boils down to they had no idea what they were doing, if it would work, if it was even possible. They were literally just the pioneers in this brand new frontier of what would become MMORPGs. From there, he, he eventually ended up in a role at Sony Online that he just didn't enjoy. He ended up being an overseer of projects. Uh, at that point, he was overseeing things like the continuation of EverQuest, uh, the launch of EverQuest 2, prepping up Star Wars Galaxies, and he, he mentions in an interview one time that uh, he would just kind of go over to the office, for example, of Star Wars Galaxies, uh, you know, that office where they were working on that game, and just be like, how's things going? Where are you guys at now? You know, uh, how's the, the development going? Uh, you know, just basic supervisor overseeing the project from a very far distance, okay? And he didn't like that. The way he words it is he liked to be in the trenches. So, he ended up leaving Sony Online, making his own company, going out and, and working on his next big project, which would be Vanguard Saga of Heroes. Whew, then it gets messy. So, basically, to make to, to shorten that down, what happened there was they needed money, they needed funding, and they looked around. Um, Microsoft was supposed to actually publish the game and provide their funding. Microsoft began backing out and getting a little iffy and wanting to push the game to be launched really quickly to where it just wasn't feasible. So Brad went out looking for another publisher, somebody else who could give them more time. He knew they needed at minimum a year. So Sony Online, he reached into his friends that and people he knew at Sony Online. They said, sure, but we can't give you a year, but we'll give you six months. Well, that was a better deal than he had at Microsoft, so he took it. They slammed, packed, tried to get it done in six months. They absolutely could not. I mean, the time frame they needed in even crunch mode was a year. They only got six months, so it was split in half. So, Vanguard ended up launching completely unoptimized, not finished. There were races missing tails, I remember. It was a, I hate to say it was a disaster, okay? It was not good. Uh, he, he knew that, he's admitted it, you know, in many interviews. That, that was definitely not what he wanted to happen, but that's what he had available. And that's what had to happen. So, because it was unoptimized and because they were going for such a lofty goal with this open world, no zones, you know, an actual landscape gargantuan for the time, you know, it, it, and it was unoptimized. People couldn't run the game. Even people with really good rigs could not hardly run the game at all. It was bad. It was really bad. And as we know, in 2019, if your MMORPG launches as a complete disaster, it is nigh near impossible to make a recovery. So that's what happened to Vanguard, unfortunately. Sony Online, of course, dried up the funding, and 
they had to shut it down. It lasted much longer, to be honest, than it pro than most MMOs would. Let's put it that way. The, definitely, most MMOs with a launch like that would have been lucky to even make it a, a year. Uh, so Vanguard lasted about seven years, so that's pretty impressive considering the rocky start. They did eventually get the game running good and everything was working fairly well and things were getting balanced out and all of that, but all the players were already gone. After that project, he took a long break. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I think his heart was broken. I think he felt like a broken man, a broken career. I think he honestly felt like his reputation was completely destroyed. However, the community continued sending him emails, asking him, begging him, come on, please, you're the only hope, you're the guy, you're the guy that can do it. You gotta bring back the old school feeling of MMORPGs, only you can do it. He finally looked around, felt the wind in the air, realized that Kickstarter and platforms like that were beginning to see a lot of projects through, and he went with it. Now, we've all heard the story of Pantheon getting started, so I'm not going to get into that. But basically now, because as of right now, in March 2019, they do not have a publisher. They are completely funded by the fans. They've made a complete roadmap right now. They know exactly when they want to go into alpha, when they want to go into beta, when they want to launch. Okay, they have an internal they have internal dates for that right now. We we'll, we definitely won't learn those dates because he doesn't want to make a promise yet because he's got too much experience in the MMORPG genre he understands that most of the time things happen and change and cause big setbacks so he'd rather wait until he's at a point where he feels more comfortable to begin discussing that he has to discuss that with us the fans not a publisher not people who are pushing him kicking him and his game out the door wanting to make money right now needing to make mass profit right now right now because they're fan funded what they need is funding to get more developers, to get more people on the team, to make the development smoother and faster. That's what they need now. That's the only reason that they need funding right now. It's not because they need to make a profit right now. They need to pay the employees. They need to pay the members of the crew of Visionary Realms. That's a much better place to be in than having a company nagging at you that we need profit, we need profit, we need return on the investment of you ASAP, okay? Because there is no profit right now, and there doesn't need to be. They just need to be able to pay their bills and make the game. And that leaves Brad, for the first time in his long career, over 20 years ago, he started his crusade, his epic journey into MMORPGs, and now, tw over 20 years later, he's finally in a position where he can do it at his pace, at the pace the game needs, and release the game when the game is ready. This puts him in the best position to realize his vision, okay? He's also not being hampered down by investors demanding things from Pantheon, demanding things be in the game, he gets to decide what's in the game. And that means we're for the very first time going to see a game with his full vision, what he wanted to do all these years, okay? The innovation, the world being alive, the community, everything being around a social environment, all the things that he loves about MMORPGs, that we love about MMORPGs, the reason that we're such big fanboys of Brad McQuaid. And now we get to see what happens when Mr. Brad McQuaid gets to do as he needs to do. And I'm so excited to find out what this ends up being. I can't even imagine how cool Vanguard, even back then, would have would have ended up being had he just had the time to make the game how he wants. If you load up Vanguard on it, and the only way to do that now is through the emulator project, which that guy does a fantastic job, by the way. But if you were to log into that now, you would be very impressed. I'm telling you. 
you would be super impressed with what he was able to do and you can just see the innovation that would eventually go into our new MMO, Pantheon. You can see it, it's so alive and vibrant and real and tangible. So what's gonna happen now that Brad McQuaid doesn't have the issues that he was plagued with with Vanguard and he has the experience from EverQuest and Vanguard going into Pantheon Rise of the Fallen and throughout this development cycle so far, well, what happens, some of it already has happened. It's a beautiful community is already forming and queuing up. This community, and I know, I get it, every, every MMO claims, oh, our community's the best. Okay, whatever, dude. This is literally the best community, and I hopped, jumped, skipped all through the MMO world. This is literally the pinnacle of creating a community around the video game. It couldn't get any better. Are there going to be problems? Yes, absolutely. Is the game going to launch with some major glitches? Absolutely. Is the community going to stand by Visionary Realms? I believe so. And I believe we'll have a much closer relationship with the game developer when the game launches because of how much they've shared of the journey to get it to launch with us. And that's only going to increase as we go forward. I know we're, we're literally in the Dark Ages right now. That's, that's what's going on right now. There was a Dark Age for Pantheon before, and that was when there was very little information because it was just getting off the ground. They were building the framework for the game. That was pretty dark time. We're in the last dark period, which is basically we don't have anything to go off of because they're, pre they're prepping Fair Hell for a minimum caliber of launch, and it just takes time. But guys, I hope you were able to glean something from this. I'm so excited that Brad McQuaid finally gets to make his vision a reality and he has the best shot at doing that of all time. And I can't wait to see what becomes of it with that freedom that he has in this development cycle. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, guys, God bless and happy gaming.